Hey folks, Dan Furrow here with your market update for May 6th, 2024. So our economic calendar is pretty light this week. So I'm going to explain two things to you. One is all the headlines are saying, oh, this is a repeat of the 1970s. I'm going to show you what happened in the 70s and why, and why it kind of mirrors today's data. And then we're going to go over and I'm going to explain to you how mortgage rates work and what you should really follow or how to follow where mortgage rates are going. So without further ado, let's get over to it. So we're seeing right through here, these are the top six programs people use when they're buying buying their first house. These aren't my rates. What are these rates consist of? Well, Mortgage News Daily, right up there at the top, they surveyed lenders all over the country and they asked them this question. And there's five questions that they ans they ask them, and I'm going to also give you a little bit of details in the background of, the, of this, just to prove to, a point to you guys. So they ask them this question: If you're buying a, your first home, it's going to be a single-family home in your primary home where you're going to live. You know that's where your rates are, but these people are a little bit different. Where are they a little bit different? Well, if you go through here, it's going to tell you what you need to do to qualify for this. So these people have a 75% loan to value, meaning they're putting down 25%, and they have a 780 credit score. So that's probably not you. And if that's not you, well, if that is you, then most likely these are where your rates are going to be. If that's not you, I'm going to show you how to get in touch with me at the end of this video, how I can help you navigate if you're looking to buy a house in 2024. So. So let's get to the economic news that we have for this week, and it's dismal. Here it is. The only really things of substance we have coming out this week is on Thursday. It's the jobs report because the Federal Reserve really wants to see what's going on with jobs. Remember, they want less people working. That's what caused this big uh, drop in rates the other day. The, uh, the employment numbers are starting to come down and come down quite a bit. So if you go to the headline news, we'll just go to Yahoo Finance. You're going to start seeing the, the markets are liking some of the data that we're seeing today because over on the side here, you can see the NASDAQ is up, the Russell's up, crude oil unfortunately is up, gold's up, and everything else is up. All the markets are up right now, and there's really not a lot of economic news coming out today on that front. So let's get to one of the big pieces of the puzzle that we're seeing right through here, and that is right through here. You can see why today's housing market echoes the dark era. The dark era was the 1970s. And everybody's like, oh, the 1970s. Remember when inflation was out of whack and the Federal Reserve came in and they increased rates exponentially and all this other stuff. Well, why did they do what they did? Well, inflation ran out of control. One of the biggest factors behind all that was oil back in the day. I lived it. I was, I was alive, yes, in the 1970s. If you go down through here, it's going to explain all that information for you, but you're going to find some, some major captions down through here, and it's quite a ways down. Into winter of 1972 and 73, Burns began to worry about inflation. In 1973, inflation more than doubled to 8.8%. That's basically where we were last year, about a year and a half ago. Later in the decade, it would be 12%, and then in the 80s, it would go to 14%. What actually happened? Let's find out the main culprit, because that's the only way you can solve an equation. You got to figure out what the main culprit is. Well, if you go down through here and you go a little bit further, it says, what happened? Well, the Federal Reserve policies, the uh, promoted a large increase in the money supply are considered the main reasons for the great inflation. So think of it. What happened during COVID? Well, the Federal Reserve and the government just pumped the, the economy full of money. And I, I explained that to you and showed that to you multiple times. Let's just go over to the M2 money supply. Here's the M2 money supply. This is how much money is in circulation. You can see it's just usually a gradually little slope. And then here, boom, the, the Fed and the government just pumped the economy full of money. That, that created inflation. Okay, that, that number is starting to get kind of pulled out right now. So let's look at the last five years. We're starting to come off that trend and so forth. So we're, we're kind of stagnating this right now. But basically, I wanted to explain to you, inflation ran out of control at that time. The Federal Reserve jumped in and just pumped a bunch of money into the money supply. And that basically had too much money chasing too few goods. That is inflation. And that caused inflation to go up. Okay, so that's what we saw during this time. We had COVID. COVID, people were stuck at home. They were, you know, you couldn't work, you couldn't do this. So you just, you were getting money, you're getting your paychecks, you're getting stimulus money, and you just spend it. And I don't blame you. I did as well. You sit at home and you're just, you're, you're, I won't say bored, you're depressed. And then you start spending money. It just kind of makes you feel good. And that's what happened. And so you had the inflation. During that time too, we had the federal government or the Federal Reserve had interest rates at the, I think the lowest ever in history. And that had a whole glut of people going in and taking advantage of those rates, buying houses. So then you had a housing shortage. And a lot of people are, are saying there's truly not a housing shortage. We're going to talk about that maybe tomorrow because there's, again, the economic calendar, there's not too much meat on the bones there 
for Tuesday as well. So we'll go through that. But what I want to explain to you guys today is if you're looking at mortgage rates, how in the world do you figure this out? Okay, so I want to explain this to you. I, I did a brief explanation last week, but I want to just pigeon, you know, pinpoint this so you guys understand. Okay, mortgage rates are created by a bond, and that bond is called a mortgage-backed security, and that bond is right there, and that's why I have these charts up all day on one of my computers. I follow the mortgage-backed security because I want to figure out where mortgage rates are going, okay, for me and my clients. All right, so what you need to understand is what's going on with this, okay? Right now, you're going to see that's down, I think, three ticks. It was up a little bit, but we're, we're kind of stagnant. Let's go out just about five or six days. Let's go out what happened in the last five days, right through here. So we had mortgage or bond prices that were down here last week, then what happened is employment numbers came in and they were dismal. And then what happened is there was a huge rally, a huge rally, an up rally in the price of a mortgage bond. Okay. What you need to understand is how bonds really work. Okay. So bonds work this way. If the price that you're seeing right through here, if the price is going up, the yields, the yields are coming down. So mortgage rates are coming down. We love when this thing has a nice little rally going on. So let me, let me explain how it works. I did this on Friday, but I just want to make it as simple as I can. I'm going to show you how paying a higher price brings down your yields and your mortgage rates. Okay, so let's start with this. And we have a mortgage bond. Let's just for hypothetical reasons, we'll say my, our mortgage bond, when it matures, it's worth $100. Okay, so whenever, whoever's holding that bond when it matures, when you hand it in, you're going to get 100 bucks back. Okay, so today I'm going to give you 50 bucks. I'll give you 50 bucks. You give me my $100 mortgage bond. I sit on it for a year, and then after a year, I hand it back to you because it matured, and you give me 100 bucks back. Okay, I paid you 50. You gave me 100 bucks back. What's my yield? I doubled my money, 100%. Okay, so now let's make this simple. Now let's bring up the price. Okay, so to make the simplest way to do this is let's say I pay you a hundred bucks today. So I pay you a hundred bucks today. You give me my bond. Okay, I wait a year. Next year I come, I give you my bond back and you give me my hundred bucks back because that's the face value of the bond. So I gave you a hundred bucks. You give me a hundred bucks back. What's my yield? Zero. I didn't make any money. So do you see how when I pay a lower price, I get a, a, my lower price, it brings the, the uh, yields down. When the price goes up, the yields flip-flop. I'm giving, confusing myself right now. When the price goes up, the yields come down. That, that's basically my simplest terms that we have there. So that's what's happening in the markets. And that's why we focus in on this bond on a daily basis. And then the economic news that will should be or will be affecting this bond. Okay. So that's that for today. Tomorrow, like I said, we're going to go over housing inventory. Some people saying there's an inventory shortage. Some people saying there's not, but I did tell you at the beginning of this video, if you're out there and you, you don't meet the criteria for this stuff, what rate do you have? Well, what rate can you get? Well, you can sit around and call different banks all day long and you know put in your application and do this and do that. And then they'll give you the what rate you qualify for. What if I can say, how about if you had one application, one credit pool, and we can you know scan your, your loan 20, 30 different lenders? We do that for you. Okay, so that's what we do here. So I'm a loan officer and I'm also a mortgage broker. What that helps you is you can apply at one place. So like I said, one credit pool, one application, I'm gonna shop your loan with about 30 different lenders right now to see who's got the best rate for you. So you don't have to do this because what's gonna happen is, let's say for example, like last Friday, rates went down almost an eighth of a percent. If you got a quote the day before, maybe you locked in, well, you got a much higher rate. Okay, so this is what we do on a daily basis. I monitor this for you. So that's our basic, our, our whole goal for you guys. Not only get you approved to help you monitor those rates to find that bottom. Okay, so that's what we do here at the Rate Update. So if you'd like to use our services, please visit us at therateupdate.com. We have a couple different things here that, that could really help you if you're looking to buy your first house. You might say, Dan, I got enough money. I make enough money to qualify for the mortgage. My credit's good enough. I just don't have that money for the down payment. What can I do? Well, there's a lot of people out there in that situation. Hit the grant finder. That's going to find you grants up to $7,500 right through our system. And if you if you do qualify for those, all you do have to do is hit the hit, click the apply now button. We're going to take care of all that for you. But if it even if it doesn't work, we're here to help you. How do you start the process? We well, can click the apply now uh, button right up through there, or you can give us a call. You can give us a call at 844 775 5626, which is right there, or you can email me directly at dan at the rateupdate.com. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you learned something today. Don't forget to join tomorrow. We're going to check out those inventories on houses. But if you haven't subscribed yet and you like my channel, please don't forget to do that right over there. Take care, folks. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.